And joining us now from Yankee Stadium is Dallas Braden, who has been there along the way with the A's through this incredible season. Unfortunately, the magic uh, ran out tonight, Dallas. This was not the way, obviously, the Athletics or Bob Melvin saw this season end. And you got to give the Yankees a lot of credit, especially their pitching, Luis Severino uh, and the staff really holding this explosive A's offense in check. Um, and right out of the gate, obviously, was the one thing you didn't want to see happen. The Yankees take an early lead, and not only an early lead, but in the fashion in which which they did with the Aaron Judge home run that just sent that crowd electrifying. Um, what was your take on the overall night and the way the A's played? Well, obviously unfortunate if we're starting from the end and moving backwards. Uh, it's not fun to lose a ball game, especially in this fashion, in this environment, and especially after the season this club had. But to the point of the starting pitching that you made, Luis Severino came out and was throwing the ball very well. Good fastball early on, had some good swing and miss on the slider. Now, he only went four-plus innings, so not your typical starter high-five pat-on-the-back type outing you're looking for. But in this day and age and in this environment, again, one game, winner-take-all or go-home playoff scenario, they went into that bullpen, they tapped it. It's a very good bullpen, and more times than not, they were coming out on top of those battles where the at-bats were getting lengthy, guys spoiling pitches. The, the pitching staff of the New York Yankees also did a fine job of working out of jams, bases loaded jam, first and second nobody out jam. Oakland just unable to really get anything going tonight against the Yankee arms. Um, people will talk about Severino, especially the way he, he basically went away from what he likes to do and used a lot more sliders and a few more change-ups than normal. But I thought the difference in the game, and see how you feel about this, was Dellen Betances and David Robertson. Because they're the ones, who, uh, Betances is the one who killed the second rally, and then he and Robertson basically took the A's out of any kind of offensive rhythm at all. And other than the, the home run to, to Davis, they were never a factor tonight. Was that where you saw the game and, and turn, or did it have a turn at all? I don't know that the game really had a turn, Ray. I think after that first A-B from Judge, the first homer, uh, you could feel the energy in, in the crowd. You could feel and see the energy in that Yankee dugout. And it's not to say that Oakland was put behind the eight ball and felt like they had no shot. Uh, I've talked about it all season long. We all have. This is one of the best scoring clubs from the seventh inning on in the Oakland A's. So you weren't thinking at any point in time that this was a wrap after the first home run from Judge. You're thinking, you know what, we've been here before. No problem. They'll do their job. They'll put together some ABs, they'll pass that baton. Hitting will become contagious, as we've seen, and that just wasn't the case. They had the antidote today for the A's offense. Obviously, uh, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. A lot of people can question whether they should have gone to the bullpen approach with Liam Hendricks to start this game. It is something that has worked all season. Uh, Bob Melvin has made all the right moves to get this team to ninety seven wins and to this wild card game. Um, still, what was your what was your take on how Liam Hendricks handled that moment in the top of the or bottom of the first? Well, Liam, Liam Hendricks has handled this task and this responsibility very well from the onset. If you remember the first time around, he went one inning, seven pitches, and then went back out there for the next inning. I don't know if, if too many people really expected that or were sure of how that was going to go. Everybody took their lumps, lessons learned, and you continue to roll, and he had done fine in that role. Coming into today, I think you understood if they hadn't pinpointed somebody that they felt confident enough to give him a larger body of work, Liam Hendricks being the individual who was the most comfortable with this role and the most comfortable with this decision, he was easily going to be the choice for Bob Melvin and the A's, and that's how it played out. Unfortunately, this is the second time he's given up runs in this opener role. This one, pretty important. So what what is the first thing they do in the off season? Because after they, you know, go through the process of feeling bad about basically getting hammered tonight, and then get through the process of well, it was a great season anyway. What's the first thing they have to do? Do they have to get a starting pitcher so that they're not put in this position next year, or do they, or do they do something else? You're going to have to get more than one, right? That's the bottom line. You're going to have to get more than one. Each team across baseball understands that. It's about preparation. This is the day and age of the arms race. So with the 10-day DL that I've talked about and the loophole that exists for GMs and front offices to manipulate that movement between guys that have options in the bullpen, guys that can support you, this is going to be an arms race. And it starts with the starting pitchers. You've got to have somebody to get out there and give you at least five to hand it over to the bullpen if you want the bullpen to be what it was this year. 
Well, there's no question the A's certainly exceeded expectations. They came in with the lowest payroll in baseball. Here they are in the wild card game. Um, when you look back at this year, all the injuries to the rotation and the things that they had to overcome, the adversity, how will you assess this season? What will you remember most? Their ability to persevere, their diligence. They kept their head down. They continued to grind. They were supremely confident in themselves. Not ever shaken by the situation. Not ever shaken by player movement. That was never a problem for them. This is a team who has played together, who has played for one another. So what I'll take away from this is the ability for young guys to come up and make an impact the way this team welcomed with open arms, new additions, and continued to roll. This is a great, young, exciting group who's only going to get better as they get better together. Yeah, this was a fun bunch to watch, and this uh, future certainly looks bright. Uh, Dallas Brayton, we appreciate the time here on the Happy Hour.